You're listening to Investify, preaching financial independence and assisting investors to achieve a more flexible and free lifestyle through smart financial planning and real estate investing. If leaving the corporate world and jumping into this thriving industry is what you desire, tune in and listen to stories of like-minded individuals who made the leap to financial independence. Equip yourself with the right tips and tricks to start your real estate journey, making active or passive ventures that are highly profitable and rewarding. Here are your hosts, Craig Kerlop and Ziana McIntyre. What's going on, everybody? You are listening to Investify. My name is Craig Kerlop, a.k.a. The Fi Guy, and I'm here with my co-host, Ziana McIntyre, a.k.a. Z Money. Z, how are you doing today? Z Money! I'm doing great. Chicka, chicka, chicka. Are you coming out with your mixtape yet, or what? <laughs> I want to have a mixtape. That should be the next thing, you know? It's like, book comes out, then I like have a TV show, then I release my single, like, whatever. Heck yeah. You need to, I Why think not? in the next podcast we do, Z, you're going to have to freestyle everything you say. Have you... Oh, dear God. Have you seen Harry Mack on TikTok, or... or you're not a TikTok no, person, I'm are you? Sorry. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, I put, I like on all the socials, I like put stuff out and then I don't consume anything. I have people it's, consume for me. It's terrible. It's probably a good thing. But if you ever listen mm-hmm. to Harry Mack on TikTok or maybe he's on Instagram Reels or whatever, he just like goes up to random people in the streets, makes him say like three random words, then makes like a five minute like freestyle out of it. And I think you need to do something like that for the next, uh, the next episode. <laughs> so get ready. <sighs> I am just not that talented, Craig. I know you think that I can conquer the world, and in most cases, I I do. But uh, that one that one's a little bit beyond me. That one's at you. All right, <laughs> we may give you a hall pass on that one. Um, speaking of hall passes, uh, we've got Ashley Wokemer coming on the show today, going from hot dog cart to real estate agent and investor. I think that's kind of a unique story. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's really inspiring that she has kind of the opposite problem of most people. She's like all action and maybe she doesn't really think it through enough. Um, so you're going to hear that a little bit in her story of how she just kind of like goes for it, which is, is pretty awesome. Yeah. And a good, you know, one thing that kind of resonates with me is uh, one, a friend of mine, who he probably got this from someone famous, uh, but he always tells me like education times action equals success. And so anything multiplied by zero is zero. So you need to make sure you've got education and action in an equal balance. And that's how you get the most success. And so, yeah, I just want you to think like, definitely think that through. Um, Again, Ashley has created a lot of success, even though she's more weighted on the action side. But I think the action side is like, I I admire her so much for that. And I say that in the episode, because like, Mm -hmm. The action is so much harder than the education because you can start taking action and then figure out what you need to learn and you can do the education as you go, but it's kind of harder to do the action as you go. And so I think, you know, if you're going to skew in one way, I think the way Ashley is skewed is the way to skew. There you go. Let's watch it happen. Skew, skew. Skew, skew. (laughs) Let's bring her on the show. Hey, everyone. Big news. Investify has now partnered with Rent Ready. And yes, we've partnered with Rent Ready because that is the software system that both me and Ziana use to do property management for our rental properties. It makes things super easy. We can send applications, get background checks and credit checks. They uh, Tenants, when they come in, can pay rent automatically through there. They can submit maintenance requests, do everything you need to do for property management all in one place. That's why Rent Ready is the thing that we've done. I've been using them for years now. And that's why they're, you know, we, we reached out to them for a relationship on the show. And so again, super excited to have them on board. If you go to rentready.com and use the code investify, you'll get 50% off your first six months. That's right. 50% off your first six months. If you go to uh, rentready.com, sign up and use the coupon code invest to FI. Uh, and can't wait to see you there. Let us know, you know, hit us up on Instagram, hit us up on wherever, and let us know what you think of, of rent ready. Uh, cause again, I think it's an amazing software. I use it all the time. You can access it from your phone. Amazing stuff. So thanks so much. And let's get back to the episode. Ashley Wokemer. I can never pronounce your last name, Ashley, but welcome right. to the show. How do you pronounce your last name? I tried this time at least. 
Wilkimer, I was right. I got it right. Yes. That's that's one point for me. Uh, yeah. Ashley, thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, you've got an interesting journey that I am super excited to share with all of our listeners. And so why don't we kick it off from where that journey started and tell us how you first heard about financial independence and when that was. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, thank you for having me on. I would love to share my story. Um, so I learned about financial independence, house hacking, all of that completely by accident. I had no idea um, what it was when I actually got started. So my story starts back in 2018. Um, I wanted to move to Denver, family reasons. However, I had four animals at the time and there was no place anywhere that would take four animals. If it was a private landlord, they didn't want that many. Apartment rents were outrageously expensive. Um, so I actually talked to my mom about potentially buying a property that the goal was I would just rent out the extra rooms. That was the only way I could figure out to live in Denver. And my mom had had rental properties while we were growing up in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, so she actually agreed, which I'm shocked about. And like, seriously, to this day, I'm so thankful for my mom and she is still my main investor. Um, so she agreed and bought a property in Aurora, Colorado, four bed, two bathroom. Um, and originally when I started, because I just needed to pay her market rent and she actually charged less than what most full houses went in that area, I started renting out two bedrooms. Um, just two girls I found on Facebook Marketplace seemed like a good fit. So did you just naturally think, you know, four bedrooms, that sounds like a good number or had you read Craig's book? Was that just a happy accident? I didn't even know Craig existed. I didn't know house. I didn't know house hacking was even a term. <laughs> um, so four bedrooms were, I'm not sure what it was. I wanted a guest bedroom um, and my mom was charging me $2,200. And so I kind of knew that I needed to, you know, basically have two tenants and that would, I would only be paying about $600. And that's kind of what I was looking for. So I think that's why I chose four. I think, she, I think she needed a bedroom for each animal. And so that's why four bedrooms yeah. came into play. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't need a bedroom. My animals do. That's all that's bad. Yeah. You sleep in the kitchen and each each dog and cat gets their one bedroom. Yeah. That's a way to, that's, yeah. that's cat hacking. Um, yeah. Right. Um, awesome. So, so this so, is your, so I just want to ask you real quick. I want to just make sure I got this right. So you didn't actually purchase the house, right? Your mom purchased the house, rented it to you. You mm -hmm. occupied a room or you rented the whole house and then were able to rent out the other bedrooms. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So our deal, she wanted to be completely out of the deal. She just kind of wanted her money. Um, so the way we did it was I told her that if there were um, any vacancies, anything like that, like she, every single month, she will get her $2,200, even if I have to cover some of that money. Um, and then we also decided on, since it was her house and in the future, the goal was for me to buy it, which has actually changed now that I'm actually a realtor. But um, so the goal was if we put any money into the property, zero scaping the lawn, anything that needed to be fixed, she would pay for supplies and I would pay for labor. Um, and a lot of times I just did this stuff myself so that I could save a little bit of money. Um, so if anything broke down since she was the owner, she actually fixed it. Um, so that was kind of a nice perk too. Mm, that's awesome. Uh, and so yeah, you had zero so, ownership interest in the property. Is that right? Yeah. So later on, okay. I found out that was called rental arbitrage. So this whole time, I just literally fell into everything real estate investing, which is fantastic. I want to just ask, can you explain, like, I know what you said you're doing is rental arbitrage and you so happen to do it with your mom, but you're able to do this with anybody, right? Like, could you ask, could you rent any $2,200 house and then rent out the bedrooms and maybe do the arbitrage that way? If you're in that beginning stage of saving up, maybe to reduce your rent expense. Yeah. So it's a fantastic way for anybody out there that doesn't have money for a down payment. Um, a lot of times what it'll be, it'll be um, sellers that want to make passive income. They don't necessarily need a lump sum of money. So a lot of properties that I've actually looked into to do rental arbitrage are going to be seller financing. They want money. Basically, they're the bank. So instead of selling their house, getting a lump sum, we rent it from them. So really, really good option. Um, it's, it's nice when it's a family member because she rented it to me like $300 less than market rent. Um, but even if it was 2,500, I would have still been cash flowing. So I want to just put a little note about arbitrage because people love to talk about it, especially in the Airbnb space. And I think it's like a good 
means to an end, but I don't know if it's a strategy that I would tell people to do forever. And the reason being is you get so much af- out of owning a property. You know, you're getting the, the pay down, you're getting the tax benefits, you're getting the equity over time. And there's just a lot of stuff that you miss out of on just arbitraging. So that's the only thing that I would tell people is like, it's a great place to start, but don't get stuck there. Yeah. And actually, I'll add to that because just recently, um, my mom and I decided to sell the property. So I'll get into that later, but we are actually selling um, so that I can focus on my own personal deals. Um, Yeah. And one one thing I'll add to the add to that add to that is... um, (laughs) Basically this, so when, when you're rental arbitraging, right, you're developing a relationship with a landlord. And so, you know, perhaps they're not ready to sell right now, but they want to rent it to you for market price. you you can make some money, whether that's saving on rent, or maybe you can even cash flow a little bit, right? You can potentially rent a bunch of places from landlords, pay them their rent, rent and then rent it by the room or Airbnb it or whatever arbitrage you want to do, but you're developing a relationship with that landlord. And so you can talk about maybe doing like a right of first refusal. And so if they do ever decide to sell, then you would be they they would come to you first to see if you'd want to buy it and then you could eventually get into the property that way and you could kind of build a portfolio that way as well i've heard of that and so again there's a lot of different a lot of pros and cons to this but i would agree that you don't want your end game to be the rental arbitrage um you want it to be owning the property yeah and one of the things i've learned too about rental arbitrage is so um ziana said tax benefits there's really none i pay subleasing taxes um, and I, the only thing I get to. So why don't um, you so- tell us a little bit about the deal? Like um, you told us you're paying 2200 or 2250. Then what, what did you rent the rooms out for and how did it end up working out for you? Yeah. Um, so I actually started out really high. I just looked on Facebook Marketplace to see how much rooms were going for. Um, so and this was 2018. So I rented one of the rooms that had a private bathroom um, for $1,000, $1,050. And I rented the other room for $900. Um, and it just happened to be two girls that were out of state. I think it was just luck of the draw. Um, took me about a month to get tenants in. And so the progression, since I originally wanted a guest bedroom, um, one of the things I learned is try not to like overly befriend your tenants. So tenants and I actually clicked really well. However, we had a hard time with our professional versus personal lives. And so one of the tenants actually wanted to leave early, which was breaking her lease. She told me months, like three months in advance, and she just said, go ahead and rent out the guest bedroom now. And then if you get a tenant, you won't be losing any money from me. Um, so I actually ended up doing that and she ended up staying through her whole lease anyways. And so then I had a feel of what the house felt like with four people and what it felt like to make an extra $900. Um, and I liked that (laughs) feeling. Um, so since then I have been renting out three of the rooms average though is nine fifty for that bedroom with the, uh, basically it's the master bedroom. I chose to take the bedroom with the master closet for some reason that's not all in one, um, and eight fifty for the other one. So it made me, um, it made me 2,600 and then I paid about 300 for utilities. Um, and then a hundred bucks for random things like taxes and paying for supplies. And so I literally broke even. Actually, I made $7 a month um, for the four years I lived there. Okay. But still, you were probably coming from paying rent, right? So it's better yeah. than nothing, right? So what oh, was yeah. your rent before yeah, you moved into it. the house? Um, I lived in Maryland um, and I actually had a property, owned a property there um, and sold that before I moved to Denver. But it, more, okay. it was like a it was one hundred and seventy nine thousand dollars for a three bedroom townhome. Oh wow! Well, that must have been a little yeah. sticker shock when you guys that was why when started I moved looking. To Denver, I was like, oh my god, I'm not going to be able to move to Denver. So, um, yeah. Great. So, what happened next? Like, you just got a taste of this house hacking sort of thing. You realized that filling the house all the way was a really good move. Did it make you want to go to that next property? Yeah. Um, so my story actually takes a while to get to full-time real estate. Um, so COVID hit. And at that point, I had been a dog trainer at Petco, which I absolutely loved. Dream job. Absolutely loved it. But unfortunately, I was one of those that was furloughed um, and then eventually permanently fired. And so I wasn't sure what to do, but I did. I had no living costs. And I knew I didn't really want to work another job that had a boss, um, that I had to work weekends. 
Um, and so I actually decided to buy a hot dog cart during a global pandemic. Um, <laughs> because that's what everybody wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, at this point, I didn't actually think about buying more houses. Um, the reason I didn't think about it was because I lost my W-2 job. Um, my goal was to buy the property back in two years. However, two years was um, May or June of COVID. And at that point, I had lost my job. Very, very difficult to get a primary residence loan without a W-2. And I, um, I did have two years of rental income, which counts. But with no W-2, I wasn't able to get a primary residence loan. Okay, so let's dig into the hot dog cart. Like, first, I don't even know how you do that business. Like, where do you find a hot dog cart? How much does it cost? Like, how did you know that could be a business even? (laughs) Yeah, so I had a friend who knew I was kind of leaning towards being an entrepreneur. He actually had five hot dog carts. um, And before COVID, he just rented them out and they were making really good money. Um, And he was like, I will sell you one, gave me a discount. So it was $4,000, which I was like, yeah, I have that. Um, I needed a vehicle to pull it. So I bought a Jeep, which was $3,000. And startup costs was food, basically. Um, And so $7,000, a little bit over $7,000 to start a hot dog cart business. Uh, Read books, there's actually books on it. There's a bunch of Facebook groups. I did a bunch of research um to learn how to do it but it was really just my test to see if i could be self and self-employed and actually not fail <laughs> um and here i am still self-employed but not a hot dog hot dog cart vendor <laughs> so what are some things that you learned about business while running this uh, a lot of dedication a lot of just self-management um and a lot of sacrifice i'm very social I, i'm all about hanging out with my friends a hot dog cart pretty much needs to be out all the time on weekends, on evenings. Um, and so I had to really learn to to make sure that I was putting my business first and not my social life first. Um, and then it taught me um, just marketing strategies, face social media, how important it is to run a business. One thing, Ashley, I super admire about you is that you get an idea and you just like run with it, right? Like action has never been a problem with you. And I think a lot of people have that analysis by paralysis phase of like, they want to, you know, analyze the returns of a hot dog stand versus a million different other things. But it's like, no, that's not the point. Like, just go out there, do it, build that confidence, maybe make a little bit of money, and then that will leverage you to the next thing. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, So actually, the next thing for me, I'll go on then, unless anybody else has hot dog cart questions. (laughs) <laughs> so, you go on you go on so funny um so i so obviously it was just a seasonal um venture so i kind of needed to come up that was never my long-term goal um i just wanted to do it for a couple seasons i was pretty much waiting until the pandemic was over before i actually got back into the real career world <laughs> Um, and mm-hmm. so my mom was actually the one who said I should look into getting my real estate license. At this point, I had um, actually met my boyfriend now, who is part of the main reason um, I am an investor. So uh, the beginning of the hot dog cart, I met Max, who actually has five properties as an investor. Um, and we had that in common. And so between him and my mom... Um, they were both like, you should really think about getting your real estate license. Max um, was starting to know that he wanted to buy a house a year as a house hacker. And so I was like, well, if I become a real estate agent, I will at least have one client. Um, and That's so I start. decided to get my license. I know. I was like, eh. I figured I would buy a house too. Um, so when I decided to get my license, my goal was three a year. Um, and I'll probably hit seven or eight. But um which is thank you to the five team and Craig for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's great. So, they gave me the confidence for sure. Cause it's, it was scary um, becoming a full-time agent, but I worked on getting my license. So I did my online classes, which is 168 hours should take four months for the average person. It took me a year. Um, I, I, I'm not sure what it was. I think it was uh, back to the fact that I didn't have 
any living expenses and the hot dog cart was making good money during the summer that I just kind of took my time during the winters, then realized summer came back around and then paused for the entire summer and then came back and worked on it again. Um, but I did pass my first time, but I studied for a year. So um, got my real estate license um, in November of 2021. So I'm coming up on a year in a couple of months. That's great. Yeah, I think being a real estate agent just opens up such a big world. If you're going to be an investor, if you're going to invest in your state, um, if you want to even buy one house a year, it gives you a big discount and it just gives you so many more opportunities. You see everything as it comes on and um, you hear about stuff that's off market. So I think it's a great place to be if people are investing. So I think that's great that you guys went that direction. And I imagine Max benefits from it a lot. <laughs> Yeah. I gave him a discount the first time. He doesn't get one anymore. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of funny. Um, so we, it yeah. works well as a tag team pays me get a gone um, vacations that, you know, otherwise I wouldn't be able to afford. So it's kind of the way we think about it. Um, there you but go. during all of that, yeah. So during all of that, um, my mom retired during COVID as well. So she was an entrepreneur her whole, whole life, owned a medical transcription business for about 30 years. Um, and once COVID happened, um, she basically just retired early. So she actually started RV, RVing sailing. She left her primary residence house. And so I had the idea that instead of just letting it sit vacant, the I mean, she's been gone for months on, at a time. I recommended she run, ran, runs it as an Airbnb. Um, so I actually have been running her Airbnb for about a year now, um, went down there and helped her decorate it, got the app going again. It's uh, pretty passive. She doesn't really want to do much with the app, doesn't really know how to run the app. So I do all the app side um, talking to the guests. So, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Like if somebody's wanting to start up an Airbnb, you know, your mom already lived there. Right. So like how much did she have to buy and what did she have to do to get it ready? Yeah, actually, she had to get rid of a lot of stuff. My mom's a bit of a hoarder. Um, collections, she had collections of dolls, which my mom watches this. I'm so sorry, but they're so creepy. We got rid of them all. <laughs> so we actually got rid of a lot of the knickknacks that she had. Um, and we used, it's a three bedroom house, two bath. And we use one of the rooms strictly for storage for her. So we rent out two of the rooms. It's whole unit, rent out two of the rooms, and she locks up the garage so her car um, is safe when she's not traveling. Um, but besides that, she really didn't do much. She did, she repainted a little bit. Um, and I think she did a little bit stuff more like curb appeal, some zero escaping. But it was pretty much ready to go as an Airbnb. And it's in Canyon City, Colorado. Um, so the it's a it's seasonal. There's really nothing in the winter. Um, there's no ski areas that are super close. And it makes about 120 a night um, for a whole house. But when she bought it, it was like less than $200,000 eight years ago. So her mortgage is $500. Um, wow. So she does really, well. <laughs> she does really well on it. That's awesome. And, I, and she actually pays me. So for this one, she pays me as a property manager and she just pays me a 10% flat rate of all the income. Yeah. So that's great. I mean, that's another avenue people can look into. And also I'd say it's kind of a temporary thing. So being a property manager, if you're a real estate agent, it, it helps you make these relationships where you could potentially buy or sell for people. Um, but it doesn't give you the equity, right? So you're there in that space again, where you're still just kind of taking a little bit of um, profit off the top, but you're not really uh, getting much further. Because I did... I did management for like 10 years. And although it can be like really good cash flow, it's so much better to own the properties. So yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So next step is actually owning a property. So um, recently, about the past two months or so, my mom and I and just every agent around has noticed how quickly the market's been shifting to a buyer's market. Um, and so my mom and I were never planning on keeping my house hack for a long time. Um, the reason for that was because it didn't make sense long term for property, property management. I wanted to start focus on being a full time real estate agent and managing the tenants, especially when I moved out. Um, so I moved out about nine months ago and rented out my room. So at that point, I was actually um, making an extra 900. However, my mom, since she's a businesswoman, she uh, mentioned she was losing her in in-house landlord. And so that was going to be a little bit more difficult. 
and there wouldn't be eyes on the property all the time. So she raised my rent by $200, which is still a very good deal for me. Um, so when I moved out nine months ago, I started cash flowing $700. Um, however, I wanted to focus on real estate, focus on my own properties. So when this market shift came, I pretty much immediately was like, I'm going to sell the house. I don't recommend this. I do part of the actions. I do recommend planning a little bit better um, because I just told my kids. Literally, I was just like, I talked to my mom. I was like, I think I want to sell now. The market's turning really fast. I don't want to manage the property anymore. Um, and so I told my tenants I had, they had six weeks to move out. Um, one of my tenants did not like it and I did have to hire a lawyer. Um, we ended up not oh, evicting boy. her, but we came to, yeah, that's why I say uh, she had been there for four years and had just, or three years going on four. And I had just re-signed her, um, like two months prior. And so it just, it, yeah, she just wasn't happy with, and I mean, if I would have planned better, I would have planned better, but yeah. Just, yeah. So did you I actually really get to really sell good. the property? <clears throat> Um, so it is in the process of remodeling. We have gotten the carpet pulled out. It's being painted, I think, actually today. Um, and carpet will go in and we're redoing lights. So we're getting it to look a little bit nicer. It's in Aurora, Colorado. So just something to kind of make the appeal a little bit better, hoping to have it on the market in about a month, which is still too late in my opinion. But oh, well. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be really interesting to see what, what happens if you guys... I mean, what's kind of your target there? Remind us what she bought it for. She bought it for 315 um, okay. in 2018. Originally, we were hoping to sell it for like 515, but I'm already looking at prices. They're like down to 480. I mean, honestly, it'll still be good. Um, since it was never her primary residence, she's going to have to pay capital gains tax. So we're actually deferring those tax into something called a 1031 exchange. So she's actually going to buy a, a like-minded investment. Um, and actually, I have talked her into doing a very large house hack. So we have a property management company that specifically does house hacks only. And since I don't want to be the property manager, my mom still likes house hacks. Um, so I recommended she just goes really big. She's probably going to pull $200,000 out of this um, 1031. Um, so we're going to be looking at like eight bedrooms with two kitchens, two living rooms, things like that, and rent out eight of the rooms. And then that way she can still be making pretty much the same, but she'll have a professional company property managing it. And she'll have a very large house that will hopefully gain more equity. Wow. So is that homeroom or is it a different company? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Great. Well, I have talked to them personally, and I think that they do really good products. Like they just find great properties and they're very creative and it seems like they get in really great tenants. So I think that's, that's a great option. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and it's cool because I get to use my mom as the investor and then I get to learn the listing side, the 1031 exchange and the buying side. So that's me kind of focusing on the agent part. Um, and it feels a lot nicer to learn it all with my mom. Um, and I'm actually currently selling Max's condo right now in Rhino. Um, so both of them are kind of helping me with learning how to do the listing side of being an agent. And hopefully those commissions will give me enough. I, I have to actually do. So my goal personally is a DSCR loan. So that's debt service coverage ratio loan. And that um, is a, a loan where they look at the property versus myself. Because if you look at me, I've, I haven't had two years of uh, real estate income. So it looks like I make no money. So I can't get a loan, a, co a conventional primary residence loan that is. Um, so I have to put quite a bit down, 15 to 20%, um, which I'm almost there. I've saved almost enough. I'm looking in South Padre, Texas for an Airbnb. My uncle has a neighbor who's selling. So I kind of have a private in, um, but there's some legal issues to get that property, um, there's a lien on it. So hopefully get that one in a month or two. And then I'm actually looking to be my mom's main competition and buy an Airbnb in Canyon City. That's 100% mine. Um, and yeah, my mom's supportive, but she's like, you're gonna take my clients. Um, so <laughs> that's my goal is to do the DSCR loan. Um, but both of the houses are like $300,000 versus what would be 600 here. Great, so why these two areas? Like what are you hoping in Texas, it seems a little bit random, and then Canyon City, maybe just because you know it already? Yeah, 
Um, so for me right now, it's because I have personal connections to both of those areas. I'm a little hesitant to do an Airbnb anywhere that I'm not comfortable with. I could do it in Denver, but you know, if I have to do 20% down of a $500,000 house, it's just going to take me a lot of time to get that money. Um, unless I start um, actually building capital with investors and stuff. I'm not quite sure if I'm there yet though. Eventually future goal. So I chose Canyon City because we already have cleaners, plumbers, we know the area. Um, also too, I'll be able to tell if mom's Airbnb is getting booked, I can push people over to that one. Um, in South Padre, Texas is there is a HOA in that neighborhood um, that can run the property for me. It's really expensive. It's like 38%. Um, so I will Whoa. probably test it out. Yeah. Um, I'll test it out and, and run Airbnb myself for a little bit there since we have connections. We know cleaners. Again, my uncle is the next door neighbor of what the Airbnb would be. Um, and he's also going to sell the neighbor is probably going to sell it to me for a cheaper price. So kind of an off market deal. Great. Yeah. So uh, yeah. where do you see yourself kind of going in the future. It seems like Airbnbs have really caught your eye. Um, and then maybe when you can qualify for a conventional loan, do you think you're going to be doing some more house hacks? Yeah. Um, so right now, Max and I have agreed to move every year to get more properties and use that 5% down primary residence loan. Um, we agreed that every other year we'll trade off. So in Hopefully a year from now, my taxes will show that I have enough income to buy a primary residence. And if so, I'll buy a property, then he buys a property, then I'll buy a property, so on and so forth. Um, and we're hoping to do basically mother-in-law suites. Um, the one we're in right now, Max is doing a really cool deal. So we bought, it's huge. It's a 4,000 square foot house. Um, and it has a completely full refinished uh, mother-in-law suite in the basement, which is a two bed, one bath with its separate unit. So my animals, all four of my animals, um, get to have access to the outside. He is completely remodeling the top portion. So we found it had been sitting on the market for about 45 days, this, but this was back when the market was really booming. Um, so we got it for $10,000 under asking. Um, and his goal was to refinish the entire top, which is 3,000 square feet. So he's turning the top from a three bed into a four bed um, and redoing everything. Um, so it's going on a $120,000 remodel right now, but he's going to pull out a cash out refinance. Um, and the goal is to put all that money in, um, and use that money for another investment. So the goal is the same type of property, find a property that we can live in an area that's already finished and most likely finish the other areas with contractors. We do not know how to do anything. Um, so that's the goal. Um, and eventually so maybe just a, a little house for ourselves. Yeah. I mean, how many properties does he want? Because I think you said he already has five, right? So does he have a goal yes. if you guys are going to be switching yeah, on so and he off? Actually, and he wants to double each year. So in 2020, he bought one. 2021, he bought two. Um, 2022, he should buy four if this remodel ever finishes. Um, he's going to be buying a bunch, like potentially three before January hits. So he wants to double that. 2023, he wants to buy eight. I'm like well, happy if I can get one or two. <laughs> Ashley, real quick, where did, where, and you may have said this already, but where did this $120,000 come from? Did you guys have to raise any money um, there or are you just chronic um, savers? No, so Max is just an amazing man and saved it. Um, he, yeah, he, he saved the money. Um, or he's hiding okay. something from me and is a millionaire. <laughs> and what, what went into your decision, I guess, into like doing $120,000 rehab versus just buying another house with $120,000 down? Um, yeah. So the houses we were looking at that had double kitchens were just really high. They were in jumbo loan territory. Um, so I was really particular. I was like, if we're going to move in together. And at this point, I was like, I'm going to not be able to live for free or I won't be making, um, you know, I move out of my house hack. Uh I lose my living for free. Um, so we were looking for a kitchen, a laundry, basically two completely separate units. So those properties were high 800s, if not 900s. And that was just out of his price range since he wanted to do 5% down. Jumbo loan, I think you have to do like 25% down. Um, so the house that we found was, it was in bad shape. It was from the 80s, carpet in the master bathroom, the bathtub didn't even work. Kitchen was in really bad shape. Um, but the space that we're living in was amazing. It was perfect. So it was moving ready for us. 
And then he, instead of putting more money down onto a property, he used his money to build equity in the property. So he's going to be able to pull that money back out plus some and buy another property. Mm. The house hack burr. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically what it is. Great. Well, um, I think that's kind of the end of your journey, right? At this point? Yeah, besides the, yeah, being a real estate agent and getting a few of my own properties. Great. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's always the goal. I think that over time, like you're still really young, you've got a lot of time. And if you're doing one a year, it just ends up being a really nice portfolio over time. Um, but do you have any final words of wisdom before we go into the second part of our show? Um, for me, it's don't be afraid. Um, just go for it. If you don't have the money, don't just give up, find a way. Um, there's so many people out there that um, if you write a business proposal and you do your research, if you go to them, um, you can you can definitely get into real estate investing. Um, down payment assistance program is fantastic too. I've helped two or three of my clients um, get in. They spent three thousand dollars to buy a house. Um, one's an Airbnb host now, and the other's a house hacker. Um, so just go for it. Great. Yeah. Colorado has some really great down payment assistance programs, but then there's others that you can find at more of a national level or even job specific ones. Okay. Well, let's go into the final four. I am here, right. even though you can't see me. Z kicks off. <laughs> <laughs> great. Um, what are you reading right now, Ashley? I'm reading a lot. Um, so I'm reading Cashflow Quadrant um, by uh, Kiyosaki, the rich dad, <laughs> poor dad book. Um, that one's more, more focused on how to become wealthy businesses and investing. Um, and then I'm also reading a Morning Miracle for real estate agents, which is funny because I don't actually plan on waking up early. I just plan on using those um, the tidbits to kind of help stage the beginning of my day. I'm a night owl. My social life is like, it's, yeah, that's my life. That's my clients. Um, so yeah, I'm reading a book for, <laughs> should just be like how to start your day <laughs> miracle. Yeah, basically. I mean, he talks about that too, that it's like, I think yeah. everybody can adjust it for themselves. I particularly love mornings, but yeah, of course it doesn't work that way for everybody. Um, yeah. Great. Craig, question number two. Ashley, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, so for me, the best advice is don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah, there's been a lot of stuff in my life that, you know, I'm afraid to share if it's problems or anything like that. Um, I've, I'm only where I am today because of the help of others. Mm. Right. Yeah, Love that. we're a team. <laughs> um, that's one thing I actually really love about real estate is I think that people feel like they have to go it alone. But when you actually meet people that have been investing for a while, you see that like behind them is so much support. Like we all kind of talk to each other and help each other out. Um, so that's a really important part of our community. And if you're just getting started, find other investors or people interested in investing because it'll help you go so much further. Um, question number three, what is your why? Um, so the why for me in the beginning, it was so I could live in Denver with my animals. Um, so the why <laughs> for me in the beginning was just straight financial reasons. The why for me now is to be able to share my journey with others, especially my community, um, and help them with their financial journey. Great. Love that. All right, Ashley, last kind of serious question. Who was your first ever crush? Oh, let's see. Probably middle school. The guy I was in band, we both played the trumpet. Really nerdy. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you always shirking me as a nerdy one of those people. The band camp girl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool, Ashley. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people find out more about you? Um, primarily Facebook um, at Ashley Welcomer. Um, I'm also a country dancer, absolutely love country dancing. So I have a YouTube channel. Um, me and my boyfriend have competed across the country um, and that's always want another dance if you're interested in investing in dancing. Um, and then Instagram is at Ashley Wilkemer as well. Who's your favorite country artist? Oh no, I'm not even sure. Probably Spencer Crandall, local, local artist from Colorado. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to check him out. Never heard of him. Cool, Ashley. Yeah, well, thank you so much. He's gonna be at the Rose. <laughs> He'll be at the Rose, dancing, dancing away with Ashley and Max. Yeah. Uh, awesome, Ashley. Thanks so much for coming on the show and sharing your super unique journey from hot dog carts all the way to real estate agent and investor. So thanks so much for coming on and we will definitely be chatting soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey guys, if you're thinking about becoming a real estate agent like us, um, you might want to go to Kaplan. That's where I got my license and I found that they made all this really dull information actually kind of interesting um, and very memorable. So if you're looking at getting your license, see if they have your state. They cover a lot of states, but not all of them. And if you want to get a little discount, use our code INVEST2. So the word invest in the number two. Thanks, guys. And that was Ashley Wokemer. Z, what did you think about Ashley? Ashley is just super animated, super excited. It's like she gets me excited about it. I'm like, yeah, I want to do Airbnbs in Canyon City. I don't know. I just want to do anything that you're doing. So um, I hope people get hyped out of this episode and hearing yeah, I- about her journey. I think I'm like, I'm like sweating right now just because I want to like take action after she just like basically told her own story. I'm like, I need to like do something, right? I need to like run through a wall and create Airbnb and whatever, do some arbitrage and maybe even open up a hot dog stand, who knows? Um, but I just love that she's just so animated, full of action, so excited about helping others achieve financial independence through real estate investing as well as herself and her boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah, I think one thing that's really funny is she started out by saying, like, I was a dog trainer at Petco and I just like didn't want a boss and I didn't want to work nights and weekends. And then she was like, so I got a hot dog stand and then I worked every holiday and all (laughs) weekend. Like, those are the only times to do work. So I was like, okay, that is like the reality of being an entrepreneur. It's like you start this job so that you can do your own thing, but then you do it too much. <laughs> you know, you work mm-hmm. like a hundred hours a week. So anyway, I think uh, maybe balance is the is the lesson here. I'm not sure. Yeah, I know. I think there's a lot of lessons here. And I think really it's a matter of, you know, it, it feels okay if you're working a hundred hours a week for yourself and you're building something for yourself and you're providing value and you're getting fulfilled by that. It's another thing when those hundred hours are being fulfilled by creating someone else's dream and making someone else's dream come true. And so, you know, I think if you feel good working a hundred hours a week, like lean into that while you can, I, I'll put any money that you won't do that forever. But if that's just building your foundation so that you can pull back later, then absolutely do it. Cause I, I feel like I was at a point working a hundred hours a week when I was first starting out. Like, what is that? Like, I can't even do the math, like 12, like 14 hours a day. Like I was probably there. Um, but again, now it's pulled back and I work much more reasonable amount. So we all just yeah. want to be like Craig. <laughs> and if you want to be like me, you can leave us a rating or review on iTunes and on all the places that you possibly can, but definitely on iTunes. Z, have you left us a review yet? No. Why would I leave us a review? That's weird. <laughs> you got to leave us a review. Leave me I'm a like, review. That's the Anna girl. She's freaking awesome. I probably yeah, should she, do that. You did. She is hot <laughs> shit. Who hot? How do you how Craig even get hooked up with Sianna? Right? That's what you do. <laughs> totally. I'll do the same thing in response and we'll have a fun little oh. interaction. But yeah, guys, please, please, please leave us a rating or review. It helps the show tremendously. Um, if you haven't already, you can go to the um, go to the fiteam.com and download our house hacking starter kit. Z, you got any love that you want to share? Oh, putting me on the spot. Well, yeah. by the time this comes out, we may just have some pre-sales available for our book. So I've got a book coming out called 30 Day Stay, all about medium term rentals with Sarah Weaver. Um, Check us out on Bigger Pockets. Whoop, whoop. Hell yeah. Go check out Z's book. Check out our House Hacking Starter Kit. And of course, check us out on Instagram. I'm at the Fi Guy. Z is Ziana McIntyre. And with that being said, Craig and Z, Audi. Out. That's it for this episode of Investify. We hope that these nuggets of real estate wisdom lead to more savvy financial planning and a clearer path towards financial freedom. For more content like this, subscribe to the show at investify.com. Don't forget to leave a rating and share it with your friends. Together, we can transform more real estate newbies into successful and clever investors. Thank you so much for listening. See you on the next one.